And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first quintet match. Our first team, fighting out of the red corner, Cicero Costa! Fausto Godoy coming out to represent Cicero Costa first. Fausto ranked the number two brown belt on earth in his. And life. now their opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, 10th Planet Montreal. So really, really interesting matchup right off the hop. George Statsis, uh, one of the smallest competitors that we have on the quintet stage uh, and a purple belt coming up against a 210 pound uh, brown belt from, uh, from Cicero Costa. This is what I love about the quintet and why I think it's becoming so popular. It's, it's not just about you know one versus one, it's a team structure. So it really goes into planning how you have your guys go against each other and what, what spot they fill. And you can see that, uh, that George has elected for a four-minute match instead of an eight-minute match. And this is one of the, the nuances of the, the rule set. If there's more than a 20 kilogram weight difference between the two athletes, the smaller of the two athletes actually has the choice. Oh, it's of, a choice. It is. Okay. We used to do uh, just the four minutes, but yeah. I like the, the, the strategic nuance uh, of electing for a longer or a shorter match. The shorter match tends to be edging towards the idea of stalling your opponent out, just not getting submitted. But again, with the rule set, you have to be active, you have to be engaging. Do you think that would be more beneficial for the smaller guy, you know, having, you know, usually more cardio in that sense? It's, it's hard to say. That's why I like the, the strategic uh, element of it, right? Because it's up to them to decide how they want to play that out. Fausto electing to, to pull guard, playing a uh, uh, version of De La Hiva here. Trying to, uh, to sit back for that, that, that ashy, uh, ashy control, looking to reap over on the outside is George. So reaping is allowed, but no heel hooks. Correct, correct. And no neck cranks, so twisters are also prohibited. Okay. Back on the feet here, a lot of inside wrist control. Tenth Planet, despite having the reputation of being a heavy uh, jiu-jitsu gym, which of course it is, also has the benefit of Gia Sasuri as a, as a coach. Uh, world champion, Olympic silver medalist, uh, one of the most incredible wrestlers ever to represent Canada internationally. I think that Tenth Planet gets that you know motto yeah. from that Eddie Bravo. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Being more of a jiu-jitsu gym, right? Some really interesting inversions here, playing some footlocks. That's an Estima lock oh. that uh, Godoy was looking for. George. Fast pace, fast pace with these guys. Fosto's looking to pass the legs. George trying to maybe isolate one of those arms inside and threaten a triangle. This is definitely a spot where weight and size does come into play here. Absolutely. He's passed now in side control. George is looking to sit up, trying to shrimp, get his hips back inside. And uh, George doing a good job, not, not allowing himself to get pinned, not allowing himself to end up uh, flat on that back. Oh, nice scramble, ends yeah. up on top. Really good body awareness from, uh, from George, I'm impressed. First time we've seen a more traditional closed guard uh, in this type of action. Wait, 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 wait,
I would be looking at a stalling car if I was here uh, as one of the one of the refs. I was just about to ask you, right? So what is is the rule set now with uh, with the stalling and implementing the action? So the stalling call is is meant to force action. The there's a three tri three strike system. So the first time there's a, there's a, a passivity, action is stopped and the uh, uh, offending athlete is warned. The second time, they're forced to give up what's called a referee's position, which is a modified front headlock. Okay. And then the third time, they're de disqualified. Disqualified. And both athletes can be disqualified simultaneously if it's a dead match. Very cool. One minute left here in the action. Fausto's got that, looks like knee on belly from this, uh, he's this full, angle. He's proceeded to full mount. Full mount now. Yeah. But again, the, with, with a submission only, establishing mount, Mount is not a, a solid submit submit position in Nogi. Exactly. Yeah. MMA, it's a different story, but when there's no punches involved, it's it's you know much more limited position. It is. It is. I, I I've, I've I've said that to my own athletes. Back control, absolutely. Front headlock control, I favor over over Mount. And you see George doing a good job escaping oh, out. Going for that arm. arm. Thirty seconds left in this shortened time limit. Back on the feet. Fausto breathing heavily. That makes you wonder if the eight minute match would have been more, more favorable. George. Goes for that low single. Oh. Almost hits it too, almost hits it. Fosters grabs that neck. 10 seconds. If a submission doesn't occur, both athletes are, are DQ. Both athletes are, are eliminated. Good scramble here again. George's going to look to turn on top. Oh. And that's good. Yeah. Very good. So we have 60 seconds. We have 60 seconds until the next athlete has to be up. So with neither athlete getting the submission, that leaves both athletes being eliminated. Moving on to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, just a point of order on the rules. If a submission does not occur within the allotted time span, both fighters are disqualified. So next up, for 10th Planet, we have Corey Guitard, uh, black belt, uh, outstanding competitor, and Fabricio Barbarati, also a black belt. Uh, outstanding uh, pair of, uh, of athletes here competing. And time in. And this will be an eight, eight minute. Eight minute match. Eight minute match. Ooh. Fabricio looking to jump, jump guard. guard. Corey not, uh, not conceding the position though, forcing, forcing Fabricio to, to hang the weight. Fabricio underhooking that leg to, to threaten a sweep. Immediately He's jumping into a neck. guillotine. Corey hand fighting, looking for that Von Flu defense. If he could get a little bit more pressure across the shoulder and the jawline, he may be able to, uh, to force Fabricio to, to release. Yeah, driving that left shoulder on the jaw. It looks fairly tight. I can't tell how deep his hands are, but. It looks, I, I, my, my guess is that it's on the side of the head and not the neck. Fabricio's gonna want to be careful here, not gassing his arms, looking for something that's uh, uh, diminishing return as an investment in his energy expenditure. And Corey's gonna look to sit here, hand fight. Be patient, yeah. As long as you're not in existential threat here, uh, patience is a virtue. Yeah, yeah, you can see from this angle, there's still a lot of space there, it looks like. Now in this position here, if if he was to keep this for you know a minute or two, will the ref stop that? We'll let him continue. If there's a threat of submission, the the, the threat of submission is action. Okay. Um, you know the the same would be could be said if somebody was on their back, uh, on an opponent's back, uh, but not you know successfully uh, strangling. It's still it's still an active submit position. And Corey's head slides out as we as we expected. Go for that rubber guard. Something I know you love to play. I do, and it's. Uh, <laughs> I like that he's. I like that he's trying this against the Tenth Planet guy. Saying your, you know, your specialty doesn't 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 scare me. I'm gonna try to use it against you. It's, it's kind of uh, cool that that came from that gym, and now you know it's used everywhere. It is. It's a. It's a very valuable position. Obviously, it favors the more people with more dexterity and flexibility. Corey's looking to have to look to posture up here. Break his grip, start standing up. Right here. The ref has broken action and uh, is uh, instigating the penalty position. We'll see which athlete is uh, the recipient for the, uh, the penalty. Yeah. 
So Corey, Corey. is uh, being penalized for being a little bit inactive in that uh, in that top position. Uh, Fabricio taking the modified front headlock that we've elected to use as a referee's position. This is a great position to start in. It's, uh, it's as I said, it's not an existential threat, but it certainly sparks action yes. and it gives an opportunity. Fabrizio looking to jump pass. Ooh, almost jumping right into. Ooh, look at that knee. God, that's some flexibility through that. Pulls out. <coughs> Those types of athletic guard passes can be flashy, but also also risky against uh, uh, an advanced opponent because you can jump right into a, a trap. Uh, very, very literally jumping from the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> Five minutes remaining in regulation time. The one cool thing about this, I, I think it's so different than MMA, is it's, it's actually very quiet in here. So you can literally look at your coaches and hear exactly what they're telling you. It's, uh, I've, I've said that to people before, it's almost like being in a tennis match or uh, yeah. pride, the way pride yeah. used to be. Really respectful, knowledgeable fans. I think it's just you know, very educated fans. Yeah. Yeah, MMA, you tend to get people that just are there for the blood and the guts, yeah. where this is more of a nuanced. <laughs> Are you looking to pass now? So he's Heavy in half top time. pressure, yeah. I'm gonna drive that left shoulder into Fabricio's jaw. Four minutes remaining. Tenth Planet, one of the most actively competitive teams that uh, I've ever interacted with. These guys travel every weekend. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is banned currently in the, state, in the province of, uh, of Quebec, so they're forced to uh, get in their car and drive around. We're happy to have them here, an outstanding team. Cicero Costa representing some of the, the best IBJJF uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on earth, regularly placing in the top two or three in the world. Big, big Brazilian presence on the team as well, of course. Fabricio back in full guard here, looking to do that rubber guard again. He's going to have a hard time with that rubber guard if he's not controlling Corey's outside hip. Uh, very easy for the, the top opponent to stack uh, and even start to threaten to pass. He'll just keep passing to that side. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that hip control is, uh, is imperative. Although looking for what looks to be maybe a, uh, an, invisible, an invisible collar, which is uh, the no-gi answer to the, the, the collar choke in, uh, in gi. Corey now standing up. Fabricio looking to sweep that bottom leg, trying to take out his base. Corey's looking to put that knee in the butt, try and break the guard of Fabricio, putting all that pressure on your tailbone, opening your legs up. Fabricio looking to grab that leg. He's got, a, he's got a, a nice sweep there that can sometimes lead to a leg lock entrance. Although he is expending a lot of energy hanging his weight in that position. He's going to say hanging there for that long. That's, you know, he's going to be burning your legs out. Two minutes left in this match still. And Corey was doing a good job being, uh, being efficient with how he was supporting the weight, keeping his knees together, sitting back. Uh, it's more of a mechanical leverage point than it is work. Yeah, putting the weight in your legs rather than holding up with the upper body. Corey's still threatening that, that knee cut pass. Of course, positional jiu-jitsu in, in this context only as, as valuable as the submission that it presents. Um, you can see an alternating leg lock, or sorry, an alternating leg position developing here uh, with Corey. That can sometimes lead to uh, some interesting leg lock entrances. So we got a minute and a half here. If you're a coach, either of these guys, you know, you're going to tell them to push the pace. We got to look for a finish. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. With teams this close, a single submission can, can really be the deciding factor in, uh, in the team competition. Just restarting in the same position that was established uh, on the edge of the, uh, the out-of-bound surface. Corey again looking for that knee cut. 
One of my favorite guard passes. Oh, I felt it. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that slow pressure can sometimes uh, cause that bottom opponent to, to panic or, or, or move a little too quickly, which can present some opportunities. Fabricio, uh, a, a, a very distinguished grappler, of course, and not, not presenting anything significant to Corey. Final minute of this match here. Playing kind of a modified spider guard with no gi, which is, which is interesting. It's a really nuanced uh, jujitsu from both these gentlemen, uh, anticipating and shutting down submission attempts from each other, uh, second by second. We see we got straight ankle. Uh, he doesn't have the outside hip control. No. That's going to be a tough, uh, a tough sub. And in fact, can lead to a pass. Pass. Ooh, nice hips from Corey, but nice regarding nice from regard. Fabricio. 15 seconds remaining in this match. Corey looking to hard pass this guard best he can. But it looks like we're going to head to the next two competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, as no submission occurred, both fighters have been disqualified. Two competitors, we have Pedro Veras and Rene Sousa from 10th Planet. Rene Sousa was, uh, is a black belt from uh, Pennsylvania that was recruited by 10th Planet Montreal, part of the extended 10th Planet family. Pedro Veras, uh, an outstanding black belt, pulling guard. Again, this is a eight minute match. These two gentlemen very close in weight. Probably the, the closest uh, weight matchup we've had so far. Paris looks to be nice invert. inversions. Uh, Baron Bolo attempt. Uh, you can see Cicero Kotz is um, heavily influenced by the Gi with the, the, their daily Heva game and their, uh, their Baron Bolo game, which isn't quite as effective in no Gi, but, no but, gi. Can, still, but can still work very well. Nice oh, old nice school sweep. lumberjack sweep. Oh, Renee almost touching on that heel hook there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have it again. I think you can tell what he wants to go for. Yeah. Again, inverting. Really interesting. These guys might fall right on us here. <laughs> we got the best seats in the house, brother. That's it. And Mikey, Av Mikey Aviato, the, the referee, a black belt uh, and a quintet veteran in his own right, doing a great job keeping these athletes safe and on the mat. And a reset in the same position in the middle of the mat. Which is ideal because we have to see that position play out. Good thinking for Pedro, starting to clear that grip. Renee doing a phenomenal job with these inversions. I really like how he's keeping oh, that keeping angle. His play. Oh, oh, double, double, double angle. Neither guy, neither guy able to, to win that game of chicken. This is where like it can get so scary here because oh. you know it, you make the slightest mistake, and it's almost a race to see who gets it first. It's like who who hates their own ACL the most. <laughs> really exciting match though. Two minutes in. Great action so far. Pedro establishing a guard pass in the out of bounds uh, warning track. Pedro sitting in side control right now. You can see uh, there's actually a submission in play from that bottom bottom side control. It's uh, it's an unusual triangle. If Pedro left his uh, elbow inside that hip, and see uh, see Renee's looking to set this up. Um, if he can swing that thigh around and keep Pedro's elbow on the inside, there's a, there's a, I've seen people go to sleep in that position. 
keeping heavy top pressure here, driving that right shoulder into Renee's face. This just causes, you know, sometimes some guys to panic and make a mistake. It can be very uncomfortable. One of, one of the things I was taught in wrestling is if you control your opponent's head and face, you control the rest of their body. Well, wherever the head goes, the body follows, right? Yeah, absolutely. The nuances of these guys grappling is amazing. You can see the, the threats and the, and the reactions happening second by second. Yeah. Pedro making this a physical match, <laughs> which, I, which I like. Yeah. It's a combat sport. There's no reason not to. Alternating between shovey wrestling and butt scooting. <laughs> We'll see Pedro from the bottom position here. Renee, Renee intelligently not stepping uh, between the legs. That's what's Pedro trying to uh, trying to entice here to, to place in De La Hiva. Start to bear Bolo into these, these leg locks again. Got a cross body ankle lock. Using it for a sweep, but again, no points. Oh, again, Renee looking for that ankle. Heavy and hungry on these hips. There's a modified calf crusher there called the bear trap. Uh, can't see if Renee's arm is, is behind the knee, but if there is, the, if it is, he could probably crush that. It's halfway through the halfway through the round. Pedro freezing, freezing this position. You should be looking to, to advance. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're offensive or defensive. If you're not making a, an active attempt to improve or submit, the, there should be a passivity call. Do you feel not having the heel hooks um, in place will, will obviously hinder some people that are leg lock specialists, but do you think it'll create a little bit more action because people won't be so weary of it? You know, that's, that's sort of the, the sense. We're following Sakuraba's uh, quintet rules, which also prohibits uh, heel hooks. Um, and I think the idea is to, to, to get out of that quick draw, shootout, heel hook that you sometimes see in EBI and, and have more uh, traditional, traditional jiu-jitsu uh, attacks. Which can be very exciting though. They can. I would love, I would love to have a more permissive, uh, permissive rule set uh, in, in Ontario with, with heel hooks. I think if you look in the last couple of years, you know, heel hooks have kind of been the biggest thing and they're kind of taken off the jiu-jitsu game. You know, one of the one of the reasons for that uh, is that there, for, for many years, there was um, uh, a criticism in the jiu-jitsu world of, of leg locks. It was looked down upon in in Brazil and by by traditional Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners. And it was only uh, MMA fighters and sambo practitioners right. that were actually investing heavily in, in leg locks. Uh, and what I love about where jiu-jitsu has gone is it's all about efficacy. What's the most effective submission? Pedro in full mount now. Again, great position for mixed martial arts, but as you said, kind of limited. And BJJ. Let's see what he can do here. <laughs> Renee's looking to create some space in the bottom here. Pushing on that leg, trying to bring his legs inside. At least get back to a quarter guard. That quarter guard can actually lead to some interesting entrances as well. Oh, almost trying to set up that triangle. Side. Until Pedro uses his weight really well. Yeah. He knows his body positioning very well. Oh. Back to the feet. Ooh. As soon as he tried to jump guard there, he got pushed in midair, landed on his butt. We are in our, our third third match uh, between Cicero Costa and 10th Planet. The first two matches both finishing in a draw, which means these teams are dead even as we speak. If uh, all five matches pass without submission, Nibar looking to perhaps transition to a toehold. Again, has come back to the same well now three or four times. Pedro less susceptible to that entrance each time. Oh, he's catching that toe though. Pedro using again, as you said, that, that great body yeah. position, great pressure to... It's body awareness. Yeah, to shut that threat down. That's the biggest thing I think we see with these guys that are really, really high level, just like that, that sense of awareness they have uh, of knowing when they're in danger and when they're not. It's, it's really incredible when you see an actual uh, credible threat 
uh, how much these guys are able to withstand and still escape. Thirty seconds remaining in this uh, in this match. Uh, again, you can see these these inversions that we've been seeing all all match coming into play. Oh, Pedro, look for that toe hold. Oh, toe hold. Oh, nasty looking toe hold. Looks on. He needs to get a little bit lower. Renee's on those grimacing. Toes. Oh, he lets it go. Nice. He, tucks he was it a out. little little high up on that foot, but that was the the most credible submission attempt we've seen this match certainly. Way to tough it up for Nate. This one is going to end in a draw as well. Ladies and gentlemen, no submission was obtained. Therefore, both fighters are disqualified. So only two matches remaining in this 10th uh, Planet versus Cicero Costa Quintet match. If all five matches finish in a draw, the penalties will determine the, the outcome. With James Banville uh, competed for us uh, in June, coming up against Rodrigo Gotari. And both both these guys, for what it's worth, really genuinely nice guys. If, if you saw their interviews, uh, humble, uh, both excited to represent their team, both excited to get out here and compete. It's one of my one of the other things that stands out starkly between MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> MMA is blood and guts. These guys <laughs> love it. No, it's it's a community that's very very easy going. Usually, some of the nicest people you meet. James trying to suck that again for the inversion. Yeah, same same position we saw Renee playing earlier. You can tell these guys are from the same gym, obviously, very similar styles. Yeah. Rodrigo, not not as not as not as positionally sound as, as Pedro here, uh, which made that that leg lock threat maybe a little bit more credible than, than anything we saw from Renee. Again, inverting in there, you can see that he's that he's isolating the the foot. And Rodrigo doing a good job controlling James' hips, preventing that pressure from being applied in a in a, in a levering uh, action. It's going for that. Oh. Take the oh, back, nice, nice, nice counter. Good scramble. Nice counter, yeah. Really, uh, really slick uh, counter off that leg entanglement from uh, Rodrigo. The ref's gonna stop, bring him back to the center. Rodrigo keeping that heavy pressure, side control. James is looking to create some space. This north-south position can be an opportunity for both athletes. Uh, James has potentially the opportunity to roll up into that back. You can see him yep. attempting it right now. Difficult for a smaller guy. Um, you see Mighty Mouse often use that, that north-south position as a control position. Oh, oh Darcy, Darcy attack. Oh, oh. going to take the back. Beautiful. That was that roll up I was looking for for James. Nice scramble here wow. from Rodrigo. Good job. Wow. Back on their feet. Outstanding. Outstanding. Some really cool jujitsu from these guys. That was a beautiful transition. To, like you said, throwing those legs over top, taking the back from being in danger from a darts choke. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting because I I've seen that from north south, but doing it from a darts entrance was 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 uh, very slick from from James Banville. James Vanville, also a avid Mario Kart player, apparently. I like his style. It's a classic game. Yoshi was always my guy. Good physical jiu-jitsu from both uh, both athletes. Jiu-jitsu known as the, the gentle art. I've always preferred to err on the side of combat sports. Again, it looks like he's going to that north-south position again. Five minutes remaining in this uh, in this match. Oh, sits back for that. Crowd is crowd is quite into this match. 
as they should be. This is a very, very exciting one. Good job from Mike Aviato, keeping these gentlemen safe, keeping the action in bounds. Now, Rory, have you ever thought, I know this is nice you know, for viewing open map space, but having any type of barrier or wall to keep them in place, would that ever be something that you consider or no? You know, the, pro the problem with that is that it does does limit the uh, the, the view viewership, the, the, the uh, crowd. What I may do is make a larger stage, but then you, you it's difficult to get finishes the larger the, the stage. And these tolls, uh, not not as not as high percentage as you would think with the number of times these athletes are attacking them. Now, do you think they're going for all these toll holes because no heel hooks are allowed? Probably it's a it's a good uh, corollary to uh, to leg locks when, when heel hooks aren't there, but they simply aren't aren't as effective. Yep. Potential for a triangle, triangle. here. Rodrigo shutting it down and, and threatening the pass. Halfway through, halfway through our third quintet match between 10th Planet, Montreal, and Jiu Jitsu. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. I'd like to take a moment and thank one of our sponsors, Post Game Brewing. Fantastic local brewery. Easy drinking craft beer. Check them out at the LCBO. Looking for that Darce. Oh, the there same again. position again. Wow. The fact that that's happened twice now makes me think that this is something that's higher percentage for James. You're threatening that arm bar? Wow. Oh. If he could if he could have turned his hips over, he may have been able to force that roll. Look at it. Oh, oh. very nice. Rodrigo pulls out. Very credible attempts from from 10th Planet. Got about just under three minutes here remaining. Now, 10th Planet is down one penalty, and in the event of a... Does that come into play? That yeah. Does, that is the tie-breaking uh, determination. If, if one team has been penalized more, they will lose. Uh, if the penalties are equal, then the judges come in and make, uh, make a, a three-man judge's decision. Do they do a decision over all five matches or just the final match? Pride, pride style, all five matches combined. Okay. Team versus team. Which I think is, uh, is more indicative of the format. I agreed. Rodrigo does a great job of passing the guard, but James does an amazing job of getting his legs back in and finding threats in all positions. It's one of the, the really compelling things about jiu-jitsu where the, the smaller athlete isn't always at a disadvantage. Sometimes that, that smaller size and that speed uh, can result in a, a smaller athlete easily handling a, a much larger athlete. If you look at the 10th Planet Rash Guards, they've actually had uh, Gulliver's Travels, the little Lilliputians tying up the giant. Uh... <laughs> nice little symbolism. Yeah. North-South uh, position again, Reca recurring theme in this uh, this match. The reason James isn't able to, to roll up from North-South the way he can from the Darce is because Rodrigo's doing a good job in his hip position, keeping it low, keeping them pinned. Uh, and now as he's given a little bit more space, he slid up the body and, and again isolated James, James Hips. Doing uh, a good job shutting down that roll up. Go for that North-South, it looks like the arm in. Yeah. Again. Man. Those legs. Again, you know, it's amazing how quickly these athletes adjust to, to some of these interesting attacks. He's going for that arm. Oh, straighten it out. Oh. Oh, oh the legs across the face now. Rodrigo is grimacing. He's holding on to that grip. That's what's keeping him in this fight. Oh, no. 45 seconds. There's time. There's time. Oh, he steps across. Oh, and he breaks free. Wow, I thought he had that. <laughs> I thought he had that. Amazing toughness. Amazing toughness from these, from these athletes. This match is not disappointing. No, this is very, very exciting. we got about 20 seconds left here. Here Rodrigo's corner yelling out Kimura. Just, I think they're just trying to get him to go for something in these last final seconds. Yeah, he knows that uh, the time is bled out. 
Both athletes will be, uh, unfortunately, eliminated. Very exciting match, though. Wow. Neither, neither athlete has anything to be ashamed of. That was high tension. Great match. Uh, everybody was... was well, ladies and gentlemen, no submission was obtained. Therefore, both fighters are eliminated. Great match. Great matchup for, from these two. So now we have our... Final. Yeah, so we'll see uh, each team has submitted six athletes uh, because there's potential for two two matches. So Igor, Igor. Uh, will be representing uh, Cicero uh, Costa. And it looks like we have Francis Santamour. Now these two have matched up uh, in the past. In the previous, uh, right? Previous. I Igor uh, was representing Novo Miao uh, against 10th Planet Montreal. Uh, that match ended in a draw, although Igor was in a very tight triangle that went out of bounds locked in um, oh. and it was restarted at neutral in the center uh, and I know that was something the 10th planet commented on to me that was something we have addressed in the in the rules if you go out of bounds in a submission deliberately it's a it's a DQ and if it's the only where to go only place to go you start in the penalty position yeah, I agree with that yeah that's if the only option is to tap or throw yourself off the stage you've lost <laughs> Shane Moore playing a sort of a weak knee shield. Uh, Igor uh, threading his arm through to, to kill the, the the shearing action that that position is meant to elicit. This is a position that uh, you know, can be very difficult with a guy with a good knee shield. What's the way do you like to get around this? So I like doing what what Igor is doing. That that thread through is, is a good way to, to limit the the movement of the legs, to limit the movement of the hips. Yep. Um, and we can start when you isolate to, to threaten passes. Or, or entirely disengaging. When you start, when you start feeding your weight into athletes playing knee shields, that's when they can start to exploit uh, opportunities. Francis has one of the best triangles I've ever seen uh, in competition. Uh, long legged. Long legs. Uh, yep. Really impressive. Uh, really impressive uh, guy. Usually, that's the body type you see with guys that you know, good triangles, good darces, things like that. And we have a triangle in play as we speak. Igor, as I said, stuck in this triangle in our last match, so probably more aware of it than many of uh, Francis's uh, opponents. Uh, Francis uh, did a good job keeping the head uh, isolated with the top leg and looking to fight the arm free. Pry that arm. Uh, and he'll probably try to pull his own leg with the arm when it comes out so he can isolate that triangle. Igor, if he's patient, uh, has, a, has a good opportunity to pass here. He's got a good, good knee pinch there. Referee's going to start him back in the center. Or at least facing the center. And the referee's doing a great job keeping these guys safe. Yeah, we've seen in the past couple guys go over the top. Jordan Burroughs and Ben Askren comes to mind, although that may have been a little bit more deliberate. Trying to lessen play now. Francis feels that that's probably not as much of an option and looks to retain position. Igor's trying on that bottom leg there. He's smart. It's uh, it's not a good position for him to do very much, but it's limiting. Uh, it's limiting. Oh, he's got both arms uh, under hook. That's a rule in jiu-jitsu, two in or two out. You never want one arm in, one arm out. Gonna look to stack and pass. Yeah. Kenny goes for that control on that arm. Through the pride style, just dragging them back, uh, back in. <laughs> That can be difficult in jiu-jitsu when you're trying to restart athletes in a, in a complex uh, position that without giving either athlete an inadvertent advantage. advantage. Or, or disadvantage, yeah. One little inch could be the, the difference. Be the difference between a, a submission or, a, or not. You saw with the armbar uh, against between James and Rodrigo. Igor, uh, well, he's doing a good job not being submitted. I don't see him 
doing very much uh, threatening. Actively. He's been on the defense for sure this, you know, almost four minutes now. There we have something that looks a little bit more. Very nice. Good, good, good job clearing that leg. That and was there's well the pass. Timed. Very well timed to pass from Igor McIver. And as I said, having been in uh, Francis uh, Triangle in the past, um, probably very patient uh, in that passing, uh, really looking not to, to get caught. That is halfway, halfway. See Igor looking around for the time. I think he may be a little fatigued. Uh, that was uh, a lot of isometric holding in this pass position. So one of the other interesting things about the energy expenditure that's required for jiu-jitsu, it could be cardio, it could be uh, power, it could be isometric. Yeah, it's something that you really can't train for other than grappling. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice pass by Igor. Again, playing this north-south position that we saw pretty heavily in our in our last matchup between James and Rodrigo. We know 10th Planet has some interesting opportunities here. And Francis with longer legs might be able to uh, to threaten a bit more. Moving we'll back to side control for Igor. Igor does a good job of isolating that hip, not allowing Francis to bring his legs back in. He's gonna roll. Oh. Again, we're back to that same position. Three minutes left, and Francis does need to submit here. Um, with 10th Planet being down one penalty, that will be the deciding factor uh, if time runs out. Now, if Igor remains this passive, that may, that may become uh, an issue. Igor, Igor doing good job staying active. Yeah, he's doing just enough to, you know, to work to getting, pass uh, that guard and isolate now, position. I haven't seen Igor threaten a single submission, however, in the in the six minutes that have that have elapsed. No, he's been very positionally based. Both of these guys, unbelievable competitors. Uh, both uh, competing at the highest level of the sports. Uh, regularly, as I said, both gentlemen have competed for Parabellum Quintet on our past shows and, and did not disappoint. Here we're back oh. to that triangle I was telling you about from side control. Oh, very interesting. Nice, nice try. Nice try. He's got under two minutes now. Not at the point yet where Francis needs to go for a Hail Mary, but he certainly does need to get to a position that he can threaten quickly. And of course, when an athlete's grappling under pressure, that can sometimes lead to providing opportunities for your opponent as well. Yep, mistakes can be made. Igor again doing a good job of just being positionally sound. Passing back and forth to side control on each side. Francis trying to create some space and Igor being super tight with him. Back to the feet now. Final minute and we start back in neutral. I think you'll see Francis go for something here. He knows. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of flying triangle, but Igor. That's... Francis now looking to pass. Igor's half guard here. Oh. Yes. Igor inverting now. Looking to extend that leg out. Final few seconds here. And 10th uh, Planet, I was near, actually has two penalties uh, against them. Uh, so they unfortunately will lose this, uh, this bout due to those, uh, those penalties.
Ladies and gentlemen, as no fighters of those five matches obtained a submission, the winner is decided by penalties. Team 10th Planet Montreal had two penalties. Cicero Katha had zero penalties. Therefore, your winner, and moving on to the finals, Cicero Katha!